All right, so the rerun of Faru's new Blood Royal Banner of the month does appear to be the Tomorrow Summons, which will be coming out tomorrow. I've been making that same joke for the last two years. I... <laughs> <laughs> so this banner, if you don't know, shouldn't come as a surprise. We did actually talk about this a couple of days ago in our prediction video banner where we did go over all the returning banners in the month of April. In case you are wondering what banners will be coming out, this was one of the main banners. Additionally, we should also be getting a Safi, Retsu, and Kapachi return, hopefully somewhere near the end of the month. My guess would be around the 20th. Having said that, though, this banner is actually a banner that is... Somewhat worth summoning on, but at the same time, my opinion, and if you haven't seen my videos talking about why you should be skipping fouls in your Blood War banners, well, yes, it does feel very enticing, and of course, you want to summon. It has Misaki, Ishin, Ryukun. It also features all these fouls in your Blood War really cool characters. The main reason why you should be skipping is to potentially get them later on. What we do know is that when the anime does come out in October, we are going to be getting new eventual fouls in your Blood War characters. That's pretty much a given. We don't know when they're actually going to start, but it is going to happen and when we get new fouls near battle or banners we are going to get these characters as fillers so why would you pull on a banner now for misaki when she's the main banner character when you can pull for someone like as not when misaki is a filler character so in my opinion while it is somewhat worth some of these characters because they are limited time they are collectibles at the end of the day i do believe if you want to be very smart with your orbs don't summon on these banners outside of maybe the discounts. If you're really new, you can somewhat afford to do five steps. But overall, it's best to wait because when we do get new fouls and new battle characters, these are going to be the fillers. They're going to have all the previously 14 rounds as filler characters every time we get a new fouls and new battle banner to the point that sometime in a year or two, you're probably going to be sick and tired of seeing these characters as fillers. But it will happen and that's exactly what's happened to something like Calm for you old. So if you really want to be smart your orbs, save your orbs for when we get new fouls and new battle banners if you don't care about that and you want to summon now then by all means go ahead they are fun characters to play around with especially these three the main three banner characters Ishin, Misaki and Ryukin they're all definitely good in their own right even the other three characters Toshiro, Nemu and Mayuri can still be used in today's meta and definitely still fun characters to use while the other three are somewhat the older characters I wouldn't really personally recommend using them but they will be due a resurrection when we eventually get around to getting more fouls near blood or content in the game which again should hopefully happen sometime around October. But if you don't care about that and you're going to some regardless, let's quickly break down the banner. So this banner will be available April 8th to the 13th. So right when this banner drops is when we get the mid-month banner. It's not going to be here for that long. So they really are enticing you to summon. Now, while this banner is out, we are going to be getting the arena banner of the month. And we are also going to find out what the mid-month banner is going to be. And judging from the last couple banners that we have been receiving, mid-month and also arena banners have been containing some good and pretty exciting characters. However, they're most likely to be premium. So again, you should probably be skipping those banners anyway but regardless of that do understand the banner is going to be here for a couple days so if you are gonna summon make sure you do summon it during this period as for the rates it does follow a normal step up banner so every fifth step you are going to get a guaranteed featured character which will feature one of these nine characters and you do have a discount on the first two steps of every rotation so one two six seven eleven twelve sixteen seventeen at twenty one and twenty two all come at a discounted rate 150 obs and 200 obs respectively the overall rate for this banner is 4.5 percent meaning that you have a 0.5% chance to get any one of these particular characters. Additionally, when you do get a 5-star, you also have the other 1.5% chance to get any other premium slash seasonal character. Nothing too exciting. If you are getting a 5-star, you really are hoping that you get a 5-star from the 4.5%, the one that contains these 9 featured characters. As for the characters, let's quickly talk about them. So Ishin is going to be a speed Soriper Captain with the Hollow Kill ability, and he is mainly going to be an SP-based character, a character prioritizing doing damage on their strike attacks. He has a very good kit with a Beam SA-1, a Distant AoE SA-2, and a Above Full Screen SA-3. He has a good damage output, inflicts burn on everything, and also has an additional 20% strong attack damage to speed captains, which does make him work quite well with someone like 5th Anniversary Byakuya. One of the unique things about this character that does make him a tad bit more useful compared to other characters is that he does have read hollow dodges, which is very useful in certain Senkamon flaws, and you can use him in the weekly quest to get some transcendence material, where he can just instantly hit the dodging enemies. For Masaki, she is a human slash Quincy with the no affiliation kill ability. She is a very powerful new attack damage character. She's ranged with guard break and flurry, has a very fast nad string, and most importantly, her SA2 does come with a boost and a barrier, providing good damage output for your entire team, 
and also good survivability. One the great thing about this character more specifically now in Guild Quest is that she is currently one of the main boosting characters for the ranged no affiliation of Guild Quest. So if you are someone that is looking for good support in Guild Quest and struggling to beat the particular week that is going on right now, someone like Misaki is definitely someone that you want to have because she will be a very good support character. Additionally, that Guild Quest does feature frozen pulls and she is immune to freeze. So she's a very good auto character, fun character to play around with since it is a Misaki, and most importantly is very useful in the ranged no affiliation week of guild quests. For Ryukin, he is a power human Quincy with the sorry per kill ability, and the only thing about him is that he does have a pretty high damage output with a 60% berserker, unfortunately not inflicting any stat summons, but he does nullify range resistance, which is actually pretty cool. His SA1 is a short beam in front of him, his SA2 is a shockwave around him, and his SA3 is a standard full screen. He does have a 14% recharge, so a very good link for your other power characters, and is respectable in terms of damage output and gameplay aspect. Personally, I don't use him that much, but he does have a lot going for him, especially if you are a Ryukin fan. Getting to the older character of the banner, we do have someone like Mayuri, a sorry per captain with the sorry per kill ability for the heart attribute. Mayuri is a tad bit outdated in my opinion, but he still has a lot going for him that makes him usable. He has three flash steps with a very unique flash step animation, which I definitely do appreciate, and most importantly, he is immune to all status elements, so nothing can inflict him with a status element, which is actually really cool. He also has weakened defense on his soul bomb, paralysis and everything, a lunge SA1, a beam SA2, and unfortunately, a non full screen SA3. It only has a 900 AoE around him, which really does suck in today's meta, but again, the strong attacks that he does have with the kit, it definitely makes him usable. Of course, there's way better characters out there, but if you are a Mayuri fan, then this is the fun Mayuri to play around with. As for Nemu, she is a power Soiba with the hollow kill ability, prioritizing doing damage in her strong attacks, as she does have a 782 SP stat. The main thing about this character is that she has a very fast kit. She has an extra flash step, she has a revive on her soul bomb, a launch SA1, a beam SA2, and a buff full screen SA3 thanks to the 20% havoc that she does have. She does like a tad bit in damage since she only has a 20% berserker but it's still definitely enough to actually use her in today's age. While yes again she is a tad bit older she's still fun and still one of the better Nemus in the game and personally she's my favorite of this banner. For Toshiro, he's just a standard SP character, very similar to the other two characters in this banner. Toshiro is a Mind Soiba Captain with the Aranka kill ability. So if you are in need of a Mind Aranka, he might be someone that could be useful. As for his strong attack kit, since he is an SP based character, his SA1 and 2 are both lunge forward, and his SA3 is a full screen in front of him. It's a very fast paced gameplay style as you're constantly moving forward, and I kind of do like it. Unfortunately for me, those are just way better characters out there, so I don't really use them all too much. But again, once more, just like the other characters, since they are collectibles and fan service characters, they are still good enough to be used in this day, and if you are a fan of Zombie Toshiro, then you can have some fun with him. Moving into Ichigo, a character from Fowls in Your Blood will round free. Ichigo is a Technique Story Bar with the Espada kill ability. So in his sense, he's mainly used for Espada Week Guild Quest, but unfortunately, he's very lackluster. He can do a decent damage output, but definitely falls behind compared to any other Nad character in the game that has released in the last two years. He is due for a resurrection eventually, and that could save him, but unfortunately for right now, he's very slow. Visually, he looks great. Soul Bomb definitely could have been a tad bit better, but he's mainly a Nad character without guard break and personally I don't like those he looks very cool and getting him now is more so an investment for hopefully him getting a good resurrection in the future And the same can be said for someone like the Thousand Year Blood War version of Sajin. He was good back in the day, but again, unfortunately for today's meta, this character just really lacks in a lot of things. His damage output is not high, he doesn't have great survivability, and again, once more, just like Ichigo, does lack guard break. What is cool about this character, though, is the visuals and the soul bomb itself, and most importantly, when you do use his soul bomb, he does technically transform where his final hit in his nattering does have significantly more range as Tenken comes out of it. It's a really cool soul bomb effect. Unfortunately, though, as for the character, very very useless. You're probably never ever really going to use this character unless you do force yourself to use him. Having said that, he, again, once more, he is due for a resurrection eventually and that could potentially save him. So if you do get him now, he could potentially be better sometime in the future. And the same can be said for Shunsui. Shunsui is a speed sniper captain with the hollow kill ability. He is an SP based character, has a launch SA1, a shockwave SA2, and above full screen SA3. 
The great thing about this character is that despite his age, he's definitely still usable. Of course, he does lack in the damage output compared to some of the newer characters, but a bit of Transcendence can definitely fix that. He does lack recharge, unfortunately, but again, once more, with a resurrection potentially happening somewhere down the line within the next year or so, that could make him significantly better. There's only a few things this character does need to actually become meta again, and he could definitely receive that with his resurrection. Gameplay-wise, though, he is very fun to play, despite him being a tad bit old of a character. With that said though, that was basically the breakdown of the tomorrow summons before you summon on this banner. Hopefully I just enjoyed the video. Again, in the comments below, let me know if you are summoning. I definitely advise against it, but it's your orders at the end of the day. If you want to go for these characters, hopefully get them in a short amount of orbs as possible. With that said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.